So what we've been looking at is a three-year-old shower. Only three. Bought the house a little over three years ago and we hired some contractors to come in to remove. It was, had a shower curtain, had little uh, mini walls here, so it was a very small opening. Uh, it was tiled and there was a, a, a mortar base, but it was, it was dark and I, I do have a photo that I'll share. It was uh, pretty dank and miserable. This is a thousand percent better, maybe more. I do recall that when they built this shower behind these walls, I didn't know it at the time because I didn't know enough about showers, so I didn't ask the right questions, but I know now that there was no waterproofing whatsoever. Zero. Goose egg. Not completely true. <laughs> Let me backtrack. There is diamond back tile backer, which I believe is moisture resistant or might have one side which is uh, somewhat water impermeable. I will look into that. Aside from that, the corners, no taping, uh, no ceiling between the boards. Otherwise, it was, uh, it just looked like concrete board to me, but apparently the, the diamond back has, is a little bit of, uh, moisture resistance. So, did this shower leak? No, I don't think so. I pulled off the wall behind this wall in the closet because the plan of this project is to move this wall eight inches that way. There was not a sign of moisture anywhere. Not leaking. I also suspect not leaking, not leaking. So primarily as well, solid base. So all the standing water has somewhere to go, which is into the drain. So I'm sure there are many mysteries to come, many unknown problems to me at this time, especially trying to move a wall over. We will find out shortly. At first glance, it wasn't a terrible looking shower. Knowing what I know now, there are some things that bother me. I do know he didn't use any tile leveling clips. He did a pretty good job considering that there was no, it was all done by hand. Uh, he obviously did use um, spacers because tiles are not gonna sit uh, apart on a wall with those spacers. But I mean, there's, there's, there's lippage kind of like this all over the place. I don't know if that's easy to see. The cocked corners are, I think, brutal, like especially up there. It's just gobs and gobs of caulking. Not even, not very good caulking. I've had to uh, redo around the pan because it's just peeled right out several times already. It, uh, I was told it didn't need sealing, but my gosh, the, uh, it sure sops up the water. Some heavy staining. Oops. Heavy staining down here, more gobs of unsightly caulking. In the initial, oh, this is a really bad one. I don't know if you can see that. Initially, actually, this might have been one of the joints. After about six months, the caulking started to push through the wall. <laughs> and so apparently, it, it wasn't, uh, sorry, not the caulking, the, uh, the grout started to push through the wall and I could actually just use my fingernail to push it and make a very deep crevice between the tiles. So the, the grout was not, uh, was not pushed between the tiles very well at all. So partially because I've grown sick of the tile color, partially because I want to move this wall over and make it larger, partially because this is more or less a, a shoddy job to begin with. This is my February 2023 project. Make it wider. The colors are going to change, but I'm not going to tell you now because <laughs> it uh, it went through uh, about a hundred different iter hundred different iterations before we uh, landed on what we want, and all the fixtures will be grow or growy. I'm not sure how to say it in the ceiling, uh, rainfall shower, shower head, and hand shower. 
very little information online on how to install these things, and they're all different to Delta, which I know how to install. So off we go, tear it all out, make it disappear, move it over. What could possibly go wrong? These screws holding the wall channel to the wall appear to only have been gripping the wall by about a, maybe a quarter of an inch and it looks like I mean that looks like drywall it can't be there must be some screws into something solid somewhere right <laughs> that's a question Is there meant to be that much crap underneath a shower door? I'm thinking... The original plan was, I've already ordered, but I can cancel, the same model, Kohler, in a wider configuration. That's gross. That's really gross. I think I'm gonna cancel that and order a glass warehouse uh, completely frameless so there's only like a caulk line because that's no i don't like that that's no good i can see plugs in there but they're pushed so far in and i can see maybe that's from drilling the tile they sure weren't uh they were only catching by an eighth to a quarter into something. It, it, it did hold though, but I mean, surely I can do a better job than that. This is what I don't like. It has leaked basically since the day we got it. You can see the, the casing expanding. This is all stained. No amount of caulking would stop the leaking, so it was getting into that channel somehow and, uh, and getting through. And that's just gross. That, I don't want that. I think we're going, uh, I think in this moment, the decision has been made to go frameless. It's the same price. I just gonna have to, I'm just gonna have to make sure that my walls are super plumb and flat. That's gross. So I was wondering before I was about to get smashy with it, as I'm going to, I plan to install a frameless glass door in here. The uh, the old one obviously had the old. Uh, well, not on this side, it had a sweep, but this side had a big channel to hide uh, all of the sins of the Tyler. And I just wondered, well, how bad were his sins? Would he have been able to put a, uh, a frameless glass door on these walls? So I got my four foot level. Where are we? That's uh, bubbles in the center. So that, that upper part, upper part, nice and level. But the further we go down, Bubble back in the middle. Yeah, that's here's the one. It's exactly half an inch. And you can see the bubble goes right back up onto the surface there. So half an inch. Would that work with the frameless glass door? I don't think so because the tolerance. For the uh, the opening, the uh, the instructions say is a quarter of an inch, so <laughs> there would be large gaps. Fun facts for the handyman shower. So today is get smashy time with the old shower. I've taken some photos of the, the little bits of lipids. You know, they're not they're not even that huge. I just like to complain because everybody else does on YouTube. And any sort of imperfection is highlighted, so I thought I'd highlight it right here. My only real concerns today are when I take out the ceiling, is uh, R60 worth of blown-in insulation gonna come down on top of me or is 
the concrete board going to be able to be pried away from the existing drywall ceiling and I just go on top of that. Otherwise, I'm heading up to the, the ceiling with a shovel, I guess, and uh, clear out a uh, heading up to the attic with a shovel to clear out a large area so I don't get dumped on uh, to sort that out. Otherwise, plumbing is currently in this well. It's probably going to stay in this well, but we'll see. This is the back of my closet. Nothing there. There's actually another linen closet behind here, so there shouldn't be. A... I've seen inside that wall when they did it, and there's nothing in there. My new possible plan is to put a heated tile rack here and I'm also thinking of pulling this wall off completely. There's a big dip in it because they came out a little further than the old wall here and then just filled it with mud and made a big uh, a big racetrack and this is not at all. Well actually let's put the level on it. As you can see <laughs> some solid handyman work here. Funny, right? I would say it's completely out of the norm and they were terrible, but I bet it's pretty with, well within the norm. So I'm thinking of pulling this wall off and just replacing the piece of drywall and making sure it's perfectly flat when I begin with. I mean, why not? I'm, uh, I'm redoing the whole thing anyway, and I mean, what is it to... I mean, a piece of drywall and some paint, no big deal. Off we go! Time to get smashy, but carefully smashy, so I'm probably going to be pretty slow. seen some large pieces of the diamond backer that has this uh, pattern on it without any apparent uh, thin set attached to it and what I realize now is that not all but some of them some tiles have been mounted for the sake of convenience purely with some beautiful spot bonding leaving all the surrounding backer board with no coverage Now, I know this is Canada, and it's uh, the TCMA or whatever it is, the uh, tiling authoritative body says 95%, but I'm sure we have similar rules hidden somewhere in the guidelines. Apparently my handyman doesn't read much. some crazy spot bonding going on here. As I've been hitting it, I'm seeing enormous cavities behind the tile. That's all empty back there. Although the, the bond to the board itself is very strong, it, uh, it pulls up, I mean, they become one. The tile and the, and the diamond backer become one, but there's so many areas that there's just, there's just nothing. It's like complete spot bond. Didn't like. There's that. one. 
So the niche is just suspended, I suppose, with uh, silicone and uh, file mortar. Nice. Don't need to frame those things. That's overbuilding. Unnecessary costs. My fear was that this bathroom divider between the shower and the closet was actually supporting something. It does not appear to be the case. There's gaps underneath all the support 2 by 4s I can actually oops, flex it with my hand. So here as well, this is uh, the joists are going this way. This wall is going this way. Obviously this is carrying nothing. So I see no reason whatsoever that I cannot take this wall and rebuild it 8 inches this way. None of my worst fears have come to pass. So this is not carrying any weight. It must be either the the wall here or the wall just behind my head. More likely the wall behind my head that, uh, that has the joist on. I will go up to the attic and confirm that before I tear this out, but so far so good. Here's the back of the envelope uh, design math. We have 42 and an eighth from the other side, unfinished wall. So add an inch and an eighth for backer, tile, mortar. You get to the this side, finished wall. Another inch and an eighth for backer, tile, mortar. Then a four by uh, two by four, three and a half. And then, well, I took didn't take the half off here, but it's going to be a 27 inch closet, which the Google machine says is reasonable. And the add a catch which is quite large, is going to be uh, shortened slightly. Still plenty of room to get up there. I'm sure there's code about this, but I don't know what it is. So this has been the elephant in the room. Since I first opened up the floor, they took the shower base out. They have notched so much out of this joist. It's uh, about exactly half, maybe a little bit less, but a good six inches wide, five inches wide. And uh, it wasn't a P-trap, it was cobbled together. So the drain pipe comes where are we? Comes out here, goes over here, wise up to the vent to the ceiling, and then continues on its merry way out to the other sewer line. So what's happening is, this wall is coming and going to sit right here. So basically this loop of a drain is going to come about eight inches further, turn right, and then 45, 45 back out. Sounds simple. We'll see. The old wall is still here, but I have built a brand new shiny one. Let's have a look. Right behind it. We have old vent pipe still here, old framed wall, and then eight inches behind it, we've got the new wall. All supporting exactly what the old wall was supporting. In fact, a little bit better. And my hatch got smaller, but that's fine. So, I now have no problem at all. Look how loose that is. Taking out these supports. Well, taking out this little wall because it doesn't appear to be supporting anything really, but the new wall is definitely stronger. Anyway, let's take it out.
just like that, bigger shower. I can feel it. It's only like eight inches, but it feels enormous now. This is a good thing. It's not enormous. <laughs> this is still a very small shower. No shovel, two feet of blown in fiberglass. Feels like I've been uh, making <coughs> pardon me, snow banks. So I've dug down two feet. There is the shower ceiling, shower light. Let's pull the ceiling down. Not sure what I was expecting, I was ex but uh, I found more uh, spot bonding on the ceiling, which is a bit worrying. But they were they were very much attached; they were not going to fall. There it is. So, new piece of plastic, piece of perma base, and now I can measure where I want my cutouts for my rain shower and two pot lights. Let's uh, once again try a two-person job by myself. It always sounds good in the beginning and then there's the, the panic and the terror and the screaming. Just saying. Doing a little bit of head scratching. I've been trying to fit my uh, rain shower into the ceiling and just see how the uh, the clips work and how it attaches. Couldn't get it to go. Rereading the instructions over and over, it says 218 millimeters. And I'm measuring and measuring. It's, it's spot on. Circle, not a square. Hmm. Says I need a minimum of half an inch for the clips to catch, so the tile will take care of that. So I can just tile the circle over the square. But uh, I thought I had it all figured out, and I didn't. <laughs> 